All right, welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this deck later on uh, for our next deck, which is going to be Orzov Aristocrats. So, um, you know, I've tried this a little bit with Mardu. Uh, you know, Mardu Aristocrats is, um, you know, what I really like to play, you know, really want like Judith uh, in particular in here. But honestly, the mana is kind of tough and it's painful and against the, uh, the other aggressive decks of the format, which there are many, um, it kind of hurts. Uh, and besides Judith, the red doesn't add a whole lot. Um, Judith is, of course, amazing. Um, but besides Judith, like for like removal, you already have other removal, and you have other creatures and everything on the rest of the curve. And so, um, so yeah, we're we're going to just uh, the two color, and especially how um, how I was talking about how like the some aggressive decks uh, can be a problem. You know, like mono red. Uh, we do have a, a lot in the sideboard for it, specifically the four Basilica Bell Haunts to help us out there. And then, of course, we have the two Liras as well. So hopefully that's enough uh, for that matchup. Um, but there we go. We have, like, um, just a bunch of, like, little creatures that we don't really mind sacrificing too much. Kind of have some weird numbers, but this is where I've kind of... Uh, ended up after playing a few games and everything. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll kind of see how it works. Usually um, we play, like, these little things, and the opponents, like, have to, like, kind of deal with them, and they're they're all worried about, like, your gutter bones and your priests and your midnight reapers and all these kind of things. Your tithe takers are annoying. And Seraph and Ajani can, can end the game uh, afterwards. So um, that's the plan. And we'll see how it works out. So we got some Orzov Aristocrats. The Aristocrats kind of decks are like the, the kind of decks that I've been wanting to make work for a while. But um, like I said, with, with playing Mardu and with playing Judith, it's been kind of too tough. And so I'm I'm trying this now with the two color and uh, have some high hopes for the deck with the two color. Ugh. We need a little bit more lands than uh, one. All right, we got two. Judith, well, Judith doesn't cause, like, Judith is an amazing card, and so, like, Judith herself doesn't cause problems. It's the mana base of having three colors, uh, being aggressive with three colors where you want, um, you know, all of your colors early, and you have to play so many, like, different shock lands and everything, and it, it makes your matchup against other aggro decks pretty tough to play three colors but just like sp specifically the card judith is amazing yeah and if you go so i like judith in in just rakdos also um same kind of thing i think judith with just rakdos is is fine um but it's just kind of hard to do mardu at, like Unless you're, like, maybe really aggressive. But Mardu with a, the Aristocrat-style stuff, like, where you want to, like, sacrifice your creatures and kind of play a longer, grindier game, it's it's pretty tough. So, um, yeah. Uh, Unclaimed Territory, name humans, I don't think improves the mana. I think it makes it worse, because you still want to play spells... Uh, you don't want to just only play humans, and you just can't play spells with unclaimed territory. Whoa. Okay. So this is the problem with Unmoored Ego, is it's just card disadvantage. Like, they just spent their turn three to do nothing to affect the battlefield. All they did is just take some History of Benalias out of our, our deck. 
Um, I haven't tried Spawn of Mayhem in this specific build. I've, I've tried like some Orzhov aggro with Spawn of Mayhem. I haven't tried it in this specific build. I, I was looking at it, um, but I, I kind of like where we're at with the top end anyway with our three and four mana cards. Um, and they didn't even take the histories out of the deck. They just shuffled the library. Um, all right, I'm just going to use this cast down here. So we get to get in for four and um, the other thing is is the spawn of mayhem doesn't work amazing with priest you know like you don't want to sack spawn of mayhem to priest kind of thing um, Isn't the most challenging match to start off with. Yes. Yep, they're playing Demir Surveil, but um not not the best build. Alright, Contempt's a good card. It still puts him to six and we have six power. Good card though. Uh, DOG, it is not. So I don't even know if I really want to do any sideboarding, honestly. You know, like they're gonna have like their control um, aspects of their deck where we could have, like, discard spells to try to take potential sweepers. Main thing I'd be scared of, like, basically the, the card that our opponent could potentially have that would be, that could be devastating would be Cry of the Carnarium. Um, but how, how scared, like, do I need to be of Cry of the Carnarium? How much do I need to change my deck for that when we haven't really even seen it. Hmm. I think I can take out the ninth one drop and a play crafter and play two duress. Uh, and that'll give us a little something. Could maybe maybe be trimming on Priest of the Forgotten Gods. It kind of depends on how many creatures that they're having. This is a keepable hand. Mana's not good, but we're on the draw. We have, we have three solid cards. Any white source, and it turns into a fourth. Uh, our opponent could potentially have Doom Whisperer. We didn't, we didn't see very much from them. The only cards they played were. Well, I, I do not need to be worried about um, Cry the Carnarium yet. Them having Island Island. They only played like Thoughtbound, Phantasm, Unmoored Ego, Price of Fame, and Brass's Contempt. Those are the only four cards they played. All right. Let's see what's going on. Um, a bunch of Sinister Sabotages, Soot, and Contempt. Um, I 
They have one black mana source right now. I just don't really care about the Sinister Sabotages. Um, it's it's really only Sutra Contempt are like the cards that that are okay. Um, the the problem with Contempt is Contempt gets rid of our Johnny, which is really annoying. Soot like would kill our things, but we can get the Gutter Bones back. The Tithe Taker turns into that. I kind of want to just take the Contempt, honestly. I think I think Soot's like honestly not really that big a deal. Like, basically, if we... Like, our opponent's not going to deal with this Ajani ever if Ajani resolves. And if, if they don't have a land here, Ajani resolves, and they're just not going to deal with it ever. And Ajani should just be able to win. Because, remember, we have the Tithe Taker also, like, where they'd have to have another mana before they can even Sinister Sabotage. Because the Tithe Taker. You should be proud to have come so far. Um... I mean, I could activate Priest, sack these, get it back with a Johnny, but... Deliver us to victory. I think I'm just going to keep taking up a Johnny and go to the ultimate. I mean, it's... Honestly, we're doing just fine. This, yeah, it just doesn't. All right, we'll see. It's kind of, you know, we just had a real easy win there to start our league off with. Yep. Easy peasy. All right, let's go to the next one. Probably won't be as easy. Oh, I mean, it's it's not going to be, right? It can't be. Five lands is a lot of lands. Um, but Seraph of the Scales is amazing. I think I'm keeping this because of how good Seraph of the Scales is. And being on the draw, we can, we can draw some other things to fill it out. There we go. That, that helps fills it out. Maybe we're playing against the same deck again. Okay, no, that's already better than what our last opponent had. Hmm. Interesting going after Priest of the Forgotten Gods. It's not a, a card that Demir decks are usually too worried about. Uh, I, I expected Reaper or Seraph to be the target. I should probably just play the, the Goblet Shrine there to have a little bit better mana, but I mean, our mana is good. I'll take that. Thank you for the card. Thank you for the other card. Um. Does mean that our Seraph is still um, vulnerable to a discard effect, but I could certainly see our opponent having a contempt that they wanted to use the contempt on the Seraph. And this is 
Uh, making us be able to, to pressure them and not be able to use that contempt immediately. Ah, they have Hasa Shaker for it. Yeah, our deck's just really weak to Cry of the Carnarium. We just gotta kinda always hope that our opponent does not have Cry of the Carnarium. Card we want to see the least. All right, that's a that two life. That's clutch. Yeah, that two life's pretty clutch. Um, more lands. Do I trade Tithe Taker for one damn? So like. Obviously, Seraf blocks Seraph, obviously, so they go down to three. Uh, if we attack with the other ones, um... Yeah, I guess we do. They block Tithe Taker, go down to two, and now we have two extra flyers than they have. And they're at two, so we have... This allows us to have lethal the next turn. So, you know, like, if they... If they don't have anything... They're dead kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, how's life? What are you up to? Black Geppetto! Getting the Twitch Prime sub in here. Welcome to the channel. <clears throat> no, not interested in Modern Horizons myself. So thanks for that support there, Black Geppetto. I really do appreciate that. Sub resub in there for the fourth month. All right, so this allows them to have uh, to be able to pick up their disinformation campaign and cycle that, so they're gonna have three mana. Um, they kept their card on top, so that's bad for us. Wait, they kept their card on top and then just conceded? How is, what? But, huh. Hmm. Okay, what if we play Basilica Bell Haunts against Demir and make him discard some cards? What do you think? He doesn't die to Cry of the Carnarium. So that's kind of cool. Or Ritual of Set. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Oromo. What's wrong, boy? Can I hear ball? Okay. Um. Anyway, let's see. Let's sideboard. Let's get some of these. Let's get these dresses and drill bits up in here. Um. Taking out the priest of the forgotten gods. Um, okay. 
Here. I'm gonna sit you down here. Here you go, boy. Um. Maybe I don't want bell haunts. I, I mean, I kind of do want to play these bell haunts. You okay? I still just just coughing a little bit. No, I don't play modern anymore. Just play play standard here each and every day on stream. They weren't red at all, right? Yeah, I think they're just blue-black. So a little annoying to use the uh, Playcrafter already, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Would have liked to be able to like duress and drill bit this turn. Um, but I think we should get the thief out of there. I uh, green white value town was my was my deck in modern. Um, all right. So I don't think I want to play a Johnny into this counter magic. Let's go ahead and. and Fire off our dresses and drill bits and stuff like that. Hmm. So I get a Johnny minus and bring back Tithe Taker. Now let's let's cast this first. See what's going on over there. Disdainful Stroke, cast down, contempt. Just some annoying cards. Um, Oh, but I, someone was asking the why. Um, we still need you. Why uh, I switch formats, and it's basically because of Arena. Um, but I've, I've always been more of a standard player anyway, though, because I like mid-range magic, and standards a whole lot more mid-range magic than modern. So um, I like the format more in general. But then also Arena is just a lot. It's just really enjoyable. So. So we have that going on. Um, why did we shock there rather than play the planes? Because of how many black spells I had in my hand with duress, duress, drill bit. Um, I wanted the black mana uh, out. Modern is anything from 8th edition forward. All right, Cry of the Carnarium. Thing is, we're almost not caring about Cry because of a Johnny. Like, the Cry would get rid of the Tithe Taker. And that's it. Doom and Eldritch Reborn are just, like, you know, pretty expensive, but it is going to be really hard for me to deal. Like, a, a Doom Whisperer would be really tough, but then if I take Doom Whisperer, they can just, like, Eldritch Reborn and, and get Doom Whisperer, Burr, Doom Whisperer, bleh, or whatever, back eventually. Just taking this thing.
I don't really want my Tithe Taker exiled. And because remember, if we sacrifice Tithe Taker in response to the Cry of the Cronarium, it would still get exiled. Strength is born of struggle. Um, modern is a linear format. Uh, it's not a format where you um, are rewarded too much for interacting with the opponent. They kept their card on top, whatever it was. I will lend you my strength. Considering um, having a Johnny minus there. But I like just pressing our advantage of like making these things pretty big. And now this this token's a a three three. Um, you are capable of more than you assume. Where I don't need to keep picking up on it. Uh, hoodwink, I'm, I am not. Hoodwink, sorry. No, just, um, my job is streaming, and so that's what I'm doing each and every day here. All right, we are 2-0, beating uh, two blue-black decks. So we'll see if we, I, I can't imagine we get paired against the blue-black deck yet again, right? Yeah, it's probably not going to be three blue-black decks in a row. Blue-black decks aren't that popular. Demir decks, I could say. We on the play? Never lucky. Alright, getting our Demir deck did not do very well either. Um, getting that video up on YouTube. I am going to kill that thing. That thing generates a ton of mana. Um... Which is one of the most valuable resources in the game. So while Priest is good in this matchup, it's just so likely that our opponent has a bolt for Priest. Oh well, I guess I just force him to have it, I guess. And the th it's just so likely, though. There's always a chance they didn't have it. Real good hand for the opponent, though. So good hand for them. I don't know what these bell haunts. Kind of like keeping their cards down. Um, bell haunts don't match. I don't know. They're not the worst. Priest is not good against Shock or Phoenix. Good against the rest of their deck. Yeah, we can be like 
dressing and drill bidding them, I, I suppose. Just don't have much removal. This matchup's a problem. Oh yeah, cast down is just better than mortify. I I I missed the cast downs in the board. I want I want those in. Okay, I like those. Um. Yeah, glad we have those. Mm, I'll take out one hundred witness. Yeah. I'm going to take out a Midnight Reaper, actually, instead of that Hunt and Witness. Yeah, Kaya would be good in this matchup. Yeah, it would definitely be good here. Go! Go, Deck, go! <laughs> no, we do not want Cry of the Carnarium in our deck. Hopefully they still don't get to just have a bunch of Phoenixes and get them back and play like they did last time. You know, without Electromancer. Go, Seraph, go. Shock and chart, of course. Basically, do we want to do we want to attack with our other two ones here? Um, they block Tithe Taker. They go down to four. So I mean, obviously, Seraph's attacking. It's just. Do we want do we want to trade this body for a one one and two damage to them? Oh yeah, Seraph is great. Um, I think so. The the problem is like the main consideration is that the the bodies are important with pitiless pontiff, and it's nice to have have them available for sacrificing. Um, So they're gonna have three blockers.
I don't know. I kind of regret taking the charter course instead of the shock because we knew like what their turn, their next turn was going to be with their five mana. I also kind of regret attacking with the tithe taker because I don't have like that extra body. Yeah, I regret tagging with the Tithe Taker. <clears throat> yeah, chart chart is certainly tough. Uh, you know, chart just like makes them lets them discard the Phoenix, uh, and then find like some other stuff, and maybe they get the Phoenix back. And and, and honestly, taking the chart is probably just good. Um, so if I if I sack my one one, I do not get the Gutter Bones back. Um, but we keep Pontiff. Or I let Pontiff die, and they take one and go to three, and we get Gutter Bones back. Um, I'm going to sack this. I don't think Gutter Bones does a whole lot for us right now, with them having a 1-5 right there. Gutter Bones is in, is in my graveyard. It's not in my hand. I know it looks like it's in my hand because of how Arena has it, but it's it's in my it's in my graveyard. Radical idea is a wonderful card for them. That's a good draw. That just like a a one card get back your Phoenix. That's really good. Get a radical idea and get their thing back. Like, tagging with the tithe taker is certainly ending up being a mistake. I'm just dead. I don't really have any. I don't really have any options here. I'm just pretty dead. I have so many cards. Just had nothing. Hey, Eddie. This is sad how dead we are. Murmuring Mystic is destroying us. Whoa. They didn't get their Phoenix back? It's interesting. I don't. I didn't really want to like attack with all three and let them double block with like my token or like each one of my token. Like I didn't want to trade tokens, basically. That's what I'm saying. You know, I, if I don't trade tokens, I can have the pitiless pontiff trade with two tokens, basically, always. So like I can basically have each one of these trade with two tokens, kind of thing. Um, I kind of want to just let this resolve and play my Lyra. That's 
good card. This Murmuring Mystic is just crushing me. Hopefully Lyra doesn't yeah, hopefully Lyra doesn't get jump blocked forever. Hopefully they don't draw instants and sorceries eventually. We want to draw a Johnny, right? Isn't a Johnny good? I feel like a Johnny would be good. No! Oh, whew. I almost attacked with all of them. Alright, don't attack with those. Thank you. Whew, that was close. Johnny's, another Seraph for the Scales would be fine. Um, yeah, removal for Mystic would be good too. Yeah, if we have Cast Down or Mortify, those would be good too. Alright, I kind of liked it, my Johnny idea a little bit ago. Not really as much per se immediately right now. Our kinship, look how far you have come. Stop. We're the op. I didn't see if they top or bottomed that. Be strong. Yeah, I can't play the Scutter Bones. It's not the Gutter Bones is not in my hand. It's in the graveyard. They topped it. Hmm. Hey, welcome back, Eisen F with that resub there. Second month in a row. Yeah, I, c I cannot beat Bacon Bolt. For sure. Um, do I keep ticking up Lyra, or should I start ticking up these other things? I guess I should probably start ticking up these other things. Get Gutter Bones to be able to attack through. Then keep ticking on Lyra. Try to get it above Beacon Bolt, but like if they draw a Beacon Bolt, they'll be able to kill it anyway. Why? Why is it better on Lyra still? Because Lyra has Life Link, but I. What if I can attack wide through a bunch of with a bunch of creatures? You are capable of more than you assume. Uh, Gothy Stitch, resubbing for the second month as well. Thanks, Gothy Stitch. Sub number 16 on the day. Crack us up to that next level, getting towards that next sub goal. So seven seven lira is like the the right number against uh, dive down. Is there any any reason to not emblem? You do not fight alone. So they're at four. We need to go wide.
We'll see if they have enough spells to get back these phoenixes or not. That's a, that's a good start for the opponent. It's, it is certainly possible that we die. Um, next turn I'm attacking with the six lifelinkers. It's certainly possible that we die if they find Beacon Bolt. Um, yeah, like the Crackling Drakes can kill us. Yeah, like one Beacon Bolt, we're dead. Or we just have backup Lyra. Do I want to attack with these and then re-sacrifice my Lyra? I probably just don't need to sacrifice the Lyra. This should be some good... This should be enough life, life gain, I think. Without having to sac attack with the Lyra. Maybe they've run out of instants and sorceries. Looks like maybe they ran out of instants and sorceries. Yeah, Mystic, Mystic was insane. Um, I have all my answers to Mystic in the deck. Uh, I could play play crafters and priests and stuff, but they're, you know, if they just have the one ones. These cards could just not do anything. Um, I don't really like Midnight Reaper. I'm gonna play two playcrafters over the Midnight Reapers. I think there's just a, a chance that we can, you know, wait on our Midnight Reapers and get him, play him in a preferable s spot. Thanks, King Toll. I'd like to draw another black source so we could have double, you know, duress and drill bit on turn two. Um, I did not want to draw another Lyra. My other five mana card, that's just like, just the worst card we could draw. All right, that, that'll do. Um, ouch. Yeah, we can just take the two ideas. Get that out of here. That's going to make it really hard for them to draw three spells. You know, to be able to play three spells to get Phoenix back with with just this little amount of mana. That was the problem, though, if they did have that card. That was certainly the problem of cast downing the, the other thing was that card. They have all these Crackling Drakes. Hmm. No attacks? Really? Hmm. 
<laughs> Thanks, Armo. Stop coiling that thing. Wow. Phoenix is back. And I feel like I wasted that cast down. I cannot get a land to get to these Lyras at all. Six, twelve, fifteen. Yeah, it's just fifteen. Should not use my cast down, I guess. Should not have used that there. All right, two and one. It's kind of tough, you know. Like crackling Drake just outclasses a lot of our creatures, and um, you know, against like creatures on the ground that that outclass our creatures, we at least have. Um, oh, we we got to the, the 15 subs there. Let's get another pack. Let's crack a pack open. Um, you know, unlike, unlike ground creatures that we can uh, stall out and, and block and everything, we can't just block crackling drakes that just have huge power. Um, Alpine Moon. Good art. I really like the art of this card. Um, the card itself is really lame and just kind of the waste. It's just a waste of a rare slot in the set, in my opinion. But it's really sweet art. I uh, I don't know, Bunny. I don't I don't play modern anymore. All right, two and one. Hey, boot. Hope you're having a good weekend. What do we got? That's a whole lot of lands. But I mean, I, I really like Priest of the Forgotten Gods a whole lot. Like, Priest makes me want to keep this. Um, uh, basically started playing around, um, World Wake, or, like, during World Wake, which was, I don't know how many years ago now, maybe nine or so, ten, something like that. Our plan could certainly go wrong here. Uh, this, this hand has a really low floor. Um, Mulligan to six has a really low floor also, though. Especially, you know, Mulligan to six in a 23 land deck. Um, we'll just kind of see how it plays out. We'll see if we draw a bunch of spells. Or not. It's not the kind of hand that you like keeping. It's not a, a hand I, that I'm, I'm happy that I kept. Well, I, I am glad that they, you know, I like Land of War Elf here instead of if they were just Simic Nexus. You know, Simic Nexus, we're not going to beat at all with these cards, so I do like Land of War Elf there. I haven't played this deck for Sultai yet. I haven't got paired against Sultai yet. It looks like that has changed, though. So I don't want to be like, you know, like, oh, we're, we're good against Sultai, we're bad against Sultai. I just, just haven't gotten paired against it yet, so. I mean, even one match, it's sometimes hard to tell, though.
right, we're going to be behind. Um, if our opponent kills our priest, we'll, we'll be looking really bad. All right, I'm making the thumbnail for the Demir midrange for the YouTube channel right now. Yeah, we want to we want to trade because you know we want to make them sacrifice creatures and stuff. So trading and then making them sacrifice is good for us. I kind of feel like our opponent has finality if they're keeping the land war elf. So I'm not going to play the other priest out. I'll just play the tithe taker. play this first Wasn't really expecting that. What's going on over there? I don't really need to play Midnight Reaper first. Um, yeah, it certainly feels like finality, right? Even if it is, we'll draw two cards with Priest. Um, okay, they finally got rid of that thing. Priest does at least let us draw a card. With, like, Midnight Reaper lets us draw another card with Priest, even if they have the finality. Um, you know, we're kind of forcing them to have it, but even if they do, it's not, like, the worst-case scenario for us. So we draw two. It's weird they use the Contempt on the priest if they did have finality though that's that was the thing that like made me think that maybe they didn't have finality for how they use the 
the contempt on the priest the previous turn. You know, I wouldn't, like, them using Contempt on Midnight Reaper would have made sense. I don't know. So, yeah, I threw out another Priest. Yeah, I guess they were trying to weigh out the Benalia, but... Priest only would attack for one, though, but I don't know. They're at eight. Seraph is four power, so that's a convenient two turn cl uh, clock. Metamorph! Second month, enjoying the magic that is happening. Thank you so much, Metamorph, for resubbing for the second month here. Let's get some hype in the channel for our resub. Sub number 17 on the day. Bleh. Vivian's definitely a bleh. Beasts are much more reliable than humans. No one said restoration was painless. Didn't they? Didn't they, though? Alright, so... If I don't block, I can have these two just attack the, the Vivian and kill the Vivian. Or I can... Yeah, I mean, I just want to kill the Vivian. I would want to do that first. Um, if I do block, I can play Playcrafter to kill Vivian. Um, I'm going to go no blocks. That's a good card. Not bad. For a mouse. Um. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing with this play crafter yet. At least I have a two-turn clock, though. Not a one turn clock anymore. The priest priest would have been able to activate and deal the last point of damage to them. Um, hopefully they draw land. Now they can't activate priests to make me sack a 1-1, one -one, so these two 1-1s one will be able to kill them. Looks like they, they finally whiffed. Yeah, uh, this one is Magic Arena. Just Google Mag Magic Arena. Um, this, is, this is Arena. I don't know if I have a, a command. No. No, I don't. Alright, so we, we got game one against Sultai from the back on the back of uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Um, so cast down Mortifier pretty good against like hostage takers. VT log. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub there. Hope you're enjoying the stream. And uh, thanks for the support. I get some more hype boats in there. Yeah, I do not want Lyra. Oh, that's number 19? Did I miss one? I don't want Lyra. I could see playing Duress or Drill Bit. Um, our... Our smaller creatures are a little worse here. Mad King, Matt. 
keeping the hype going, being our 20th sub of the day. Welcome to the channel. Pack time, pack time. Um... I'm not going to bring in the duress drill bits, I don't think. I don't really see... I think I, I want to keep our deck pretty synergistic. Um, we'll we'll kind of have some... I, I just took out the Playcrafters. We saw like that last game. Playcrafter could not... It can do... You know, just little. Um, ugh. Alright, we've got to find the second land. Okay, second land. So now we get to Zealot, draw another card, so we have a few more draws to be able to get towards our third land and stuff. So the decks, calling the deck Aristocrats is uh, an ode to the Aristocrat style decks from the last Ravnica um, block, uh, named around Cartel Aristocrat. Um, as you see, there's the there's the card Cartel Aristocrat there in, in chat. Um, a 2-2 two -two that a 2-2 two -two for 2 that allows you to sacrifice um, a creature to give it protection from a color. So basically, we're a deck... So it's it's the style of deck. We're a deck with a lot of crappy creatures that we uh, sacrifice for value, uh, whether it's Priests of the Forgotten Gods or... Um, uh, the other 2-mana card. Our other Sacrifice Outlet. Um... And so that's it's kind of like that kind of style deck of a bunch of small creatures um, that you don't that you don't really mind sacrificing that generate some kind of value either either whenever they die um, or whenever they enter either of those. All right, so we need to mortify this hostage taker. Yeah, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat was awesome. That ended a lot. That card ended a lot of games. So I'm taking another three here. I'm not chump blocking. So we'll attack. Um, no, I have not tried any standard reanimation decks. I. Uh, Um, you know, with like Desecrated Tomb. No, I haven't, I haven't played that. All right, that fish is jelly. All right, let's, let's draw another land. I'd like another land, please. Okay. So now, how are we, how are we doing this? So if I play the Midnight Reaper... Like, Midnight Reaper is going to kind of kill us as well. Uh, we do have to be worried about that. Um, but I guess we have to, because I only have the two white sources. I can't go history into Hunted Witness. So I I guess I'm playing Reaper. I mean, I, I could just play Witness, um, Sack Witness, and Zealot. Um... And then play Reaper afterwards. If we don't draw another white source. I kind of wouldn't mind sacking Reaper, though. But, well, let's, let's do this. I know I would have the mana to go history first and then sack the history token in this and then play Reaper. Um, I 
Yeah, I like the Zealot more than uh, Enforcer. All right, found the other white source. Let's get history going. I am not not playing Seeker Squire now. No, I like drawing a card more than making a one-one. Um. I think the draw card's kind of valuable. Yeah, Mono Green Stompy's just not a deck that basically ever faced that I'm too worried about. We're gonna get rid of this crisis though. Um, hey, cool. Yeah, that draft was fun yesterday. Huh. A little surprised by that block because we get to take out this crisis. Um, but it certainly seems like our opponent most likely has um, Seems like they most likely have no um, friend of mine fights alone. A find out a find. Deliver us to victory. Cause they, like they don't mind their creatures dying. Like I think they want to just get back hostage taker and Krasis. Alright, now Johnny can return the priest. Yeah, if they finality, I'm honestly good with the finality here. I will lend you my strength. Because if they, if their last card is finality, then we're going to be ultimating this Ajani, and we draw a couple cards. I'd rather like I want to incentivize them using finality instead of find. Um, because Krasis could be a problem and everything. So I, I want to incentivize them using Finality. They didn't have it, though. Because I want the... Oh, basically, that was like, at the at that point, I want the a Johnny doing its thing, and I wouldn't mind trading my battlefield for their last card when I get to draw two. All right, we are at three and one. So first match against Soltai went pretty well, won both games. Um, the Priest of the Forgotten Gods is real good against Soltai. No, reassembling skeletons not good enough. It's just, it's not, the the one one body of course isn't, isn't valuable, but um, our deck has ways to make it make that part better and everything, but just two mana, it's just no, not good enough. It's it's not better than Dusk Legion Zealot, um, which is where you're like pretty, where it's just where you're considering uh, your options there. Usually, I'd be leading with Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Usually, because you'd want to um, be able to activate Priest. Uh, but against Gates, 
Against Gates, I wanted to try to just hit land drops and try to go history into a Johnny. That's what I was mostly wanting to do on my turn three and turn four was history of Johnny. So I just went with a Zealot to try to draw into that. But it's not worked out for us at all. Like, not at all in the slightest. Nice swamp. I mean, I, I can activate the priest and sack the zealot and the, the tithe taker and add a couple mana and play gutter bones <clears throat> and draw some cards. Um, Those are not, not gates ablaze. That's good. Please don't kill my priest. That is a lot of creatures, though. It's going to take a little time to make them sacrifice this many creatures. stuck on mana. So we have five mana with one white source. We can go three, four, five. And I guess Hunted Witness is the best thing to sacrifice. If I don't block, we die to Gates of Blaze, because we go down to four, then Gates of Blaze kills four things, and we die. Um, I don't... I have... Unfortunately, I have nine power here. So I don't have enough power to have it throw everything in front of the ram. I can just... I can just throw the Midnight Reaper in here. I mean, to be honest, like, let, let's look at our hand. If our opponent has Gates of Blaze, we're not going to win this game anyway. But yeah, let's let's just cash in. Anyway, going down to four, that's still just r really risky. L let's cash in the, the Midnight Reaper. I would have to, like, sack it with Priest the next turn anyway. Let's just make sure we don't die immediately, even though we're basically dead. Okay, good, good block. That's a good block against Archway Angel. Yeah, that's, that's a good block there. Um, yeah, good block. How are we winning this, though? Sack the Bones and the Witness. I, mean, I guess, yeah, that thing has lifelink, right? No, Playcrafter cannot be re resurrected with a Johnny.
Oh, and that's that's a good point there, prep that I wasn't even thinking about. But like, since we blocked the the ram with the midnight reaper, their their ram would have died to gates of blaze. Then if they had it. So much white mana here, but so much, so much white mana requirements, but so much black mana. We need to put a lot of toughness in front of this ram. Decent amount of toughness, at least. Do not fear, my friend. I want to pop these lifelinkers. Strength is born of struggle. Yeah, Ram has Trample. As long as... I'm kind of playing around them not having another creature, basically. So I'm not... I'm not putting enough out to block this Ram. I just... I'm just pretty worried about the... Um... Playing the Reaper. They found Gates of Blaze, though. Found the ablaze. Um, it's gonna be kind of tough. Naya Huali is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Sure, if I if I would have considered them playing three creatures the next turn. Then yes, my my obviously like hindsight attacking with the priest there was bad, but I was certainly expecting Gates of Blaze a lot more than three than them just playing out three creatures. Um and against Gates of Blaze I wanted to attack. But yes, in hindsight if if I if I would have known that they would have just played creature, creature, creature and not had a blaze, yes, I would have not have uh attacked the priest. But that that's hindsight. Um, yeah, I mean, dress is awesome and, and drill bit's awesome. Um, I mean, we can just play a bunch of removal as well. Um, There's a whole lot of cards, though. Um, 20 seconds. I don't really even know what I'm taking out. I don't really know what I'm doing. I kind of just have to do something. I just kind of clicked some cards. I, sh I, I spent too much time talking and not enough time sideboarding there. That was not good sideboarding. I don't really even know what I'm playing. A Johnny is our best card in this matchup. It's the the thing that they don't they don't have a, a great answer to. Would not want to take it out at all. Priest is weird. Priest was good. Priest was like good that that match, but I I don't think that that match is like kind of how a lot of the, the games play out. I think I kind of think that I should just take out the priests. A blaze and Clarion. No white mana. But they have route and summit. And Circuitous Route's the best card. Yeah, 
yeah, our our opponent, especially our opponent's gate deck with all this stuff, we're not, we're probably not winning this. I think a Johnny is kind of our only hope. Their their best card in their their hand was circuitous route by a long ways. Like without without circuitous route, um, it was gonna be hard for them to find white mana. Um, that obviously didn't prove to be the case. They just drew white mana immediately. So. My only chance is, now with them drawing the lands, my only chance is them not finding another sweeper. Hey, Junie. Aw, oh, thanks. Alright, so this is four that puts them down to seven. Like they're probably just playing Archway Angel next turn, right? Like we're in that, that same spot of whether I should attack with Priest or not. Um, no, I guess I shouldn't. I kind of want to just sacrifice two of these things and draw a card, though. Considering we have nothing. But I'm not going to. Oh, <laughs> uh, turn too late, Duress. I mean, I, I could have sacrificed the two things and, and maybe Duress away the Clarion. summit and getting the gates the classes back and everything the game's over so got i think the the thing i regret the most about that game was not take i mean i took the deafening clarion with this or the gates of blaze with the second duress and i guess i should have just taken the guild summit um i definitely liked taking the circuitous route um i would do that a hundred times out of a hundred in that scenario um but I guess I could have um, I could have taken the guild summit and, and let them kill all of my creatures and leave me with nothing. That's the thing. They would kill all my creatures and leave me with nothing. Yeah. So just kind of tough. I, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to win that matchup very much. We, Ajani is like our, like I said before, Ajani would be our best card if we could have had that on turn four and, and, uh, um, you know, because it's it's something that doesn't just die to all the sweepers and everything. But that's what the Gates deck is is built. Like their whole deck is just sweepers. Um, card draw, lots of mana, and then some really big creatures that it's hard to deal with. Um, yeah. Oh well. Uh, the deck was pretty fun though. You know, we uh, we beat Sultai, um, beat some other things, and I honestly liked what what we had going on here. Um, I thought I I thought I would want the ninth 
one drop, but honestly, playing those games out, the ninth one drop didn't really seem uh, super necessary. So I could certainly see taking out this ninth one drop here, this Footlight Fiend. Um, and I kind of just want another Ajani or Seraph. Like, Ajani and Seraph are, are awesome cards. Um... Midnight Reaper honestly wasn't spectacular for us, and there was times where it was, you know, real detrimental to us playing. This is Way Down We Go by Kaleo. We do get stuck on land sometimes, though. We were stuck on white mana a decent amount, an annoying amount. No, for Seraph. Yeah, I think that'd be the one change I'd make for next time. Uh, at least it's the, the first change is just taking out the Fiend and getting another Seraphin. Sideboard could still probably be better. I'm not not in love with our sideboard. Not exactly sure what to do with it, though, either. Um, really kind of wish I could have, like, Angrath in the deck. I don't know if it's worth it to splash for Angrath, though. But there we go. So that's Orzhov Aristocrats. Um, yeah, definitely a, a pretty fun deck, and I, I like um, where we're at with it. Um, Merfolk or Krasis Drakes? I don't really know what either what that means. Um, I don't think we necessarily need more removal in the deck. Um... This kind of deck, you need a lot of creatures and stuff to make Priest good. Just just turning your deck into just a pile of removal is not a, usually a very good sideboard strategy. So we won't be fast enough to kill anything and whatever. Like, other decks will have more card advantage than us and everything like that. Um, Profane Procession is just really slow. Um, I don't know. Profane Procession is, like, good against... Uh, a couple of decks in the format, but nothing I'm too worried about. Anyway, uh, that's Orzov Aristocrats. Um, if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for watching, and I will see you for the next video.